Describe the qualities of a good teacher and explain why these qualities are effective. Include details and examples to support your explanation. Some people like to cook their own meals at home. Others prefer to eat in a restaurant or a cafeteria. Which do you prefer and why? Include details and examples in your explanation. Now listen to two students as they discuss parking on campus. So, Julian, are you all ready to start another year? Almost. I've still got to get a parking permit, but I was a little shocked to see how much they cost this year. Last year, it was only $35 a quarter to park on campus, but now it's $50. That's a big increase. The annual permits went up too. That's probably because the college built that big new parking lot. Yeah, and they're making the students pay for it. The faculty and staff can park on campus for free, and they get to park next to the main building in the old lot. But we have to park in the new lot, and we're hit with a big fee increase. It's not fair. I'm glad I take the bus. I don't even understand why they had to build that new parking lot. It's bigger than they really need, and it's so far away from everything. It takes a long time to walk from the parking lot to where most of the classrooms are, and they want us to pay more for the privilege. The man expresses his opinion about parking on campus. State his opinion and explain the reasons he gives for holding that opinion. Now listen to part of a talk in a psychology class. One of the earliest behaviorists is Ivan Pavlov an experimental psychologist noted for his studies of the reflex reaction in humans and animals. A reflex is an involuntary action of the body, such as a sneeze, a blink, or a hiccup. Pavlov did a series of experiments using dogs. He found that when a bell is rung each time a dog is fed, the dog starts to associate the sound of the bell with food. Consequently, whenever the bell rings, the dog expects food. The dog salivates and drools, and there's an increase in the flow of his stomach juices. The dog's bodily response to the bell is a conditioned reflex, a behavior that occurs because the dog has been trained by the sound of the bell. Pavlov's experiments with dogs and discovery of the conditioned reflex contributed to the development of behaviorism. The dog's bodily response, its behavior, does not come from something inside the dog, Rather, the behavior is the result of conditioning, the careful control of the dog's environment. Pavlov argued that the dog's behavior, drooling, was strictly a reaction to the environmental stimulus of the bell. Describe Pavlov's experiments with dogs and explain how these experiments contributed to the psychology of behaviorism. Now listen to a conversation between two students. So, have you registered for spring quarter yet? Yes, but unfortunately I didn't get all the classes I wanted, like the economics course I still need for graduation. All sections of that course were completely filled up. I couldn't believe it. Really? That's too bad. Can you take the course in summer? Hmm, I don't know. I'll have to ask my advisor if I can do that and still start business school in the fall. But I don't think I'll be able to take any classes at all this summer. Why not? Summer is usually a good time to go to school, and the classes usually don't fill up. But I'll be working six days a week at my parents' restaurant this summer. That won't leave me with any time to study. Then why not take the economics course in the spring anyway? It's probably offered at the community college. Oh yeah? I didn't think of that. But aren't a lot of classes at the community college given in the evening? Yeah, but so what? It might be easier to fit an evening class into your schedule. Hmm, maybe that's true. Well, I'll have to decide on it soon because I need this course to graduate. Describe the woman's problem 
and the two suggestions the man makes about how to solve it. Then state which of the two solutions you prefer and explain why. Now listen to part of a lecture in a marine biology class. The professor is discussing problems that threaten the world's oceans. A major study shows that the world's oceans face several serious problems related to overfishing, pollution, climate change, and loss of habitat. At least one-third of the fish stocks are overfished. This includes several ground fish species that will take decades to recover. The estimated number of large ocean predators, tuna, marlin, sharks, and halibut, has fallen 90% globally in half a century. One reason for overfishing is bottom trawling, the practice of dragging nets along the sea bottom to catch huge quantities of fish. Bottom fishing with nets can destroy habitat and contribute to fish declines. Pollution is a serious and growing danger. Land-based pollution in the form of erosion puts silt into the ocean, killing marine life close to shores. Cargo ships, container ships, and cruise ships dump at least 65 million gallons of petroleum products a year into the seas. Even small amounts of oil can damage sensitive marine environments. Scientists estimate that nearly 30 million gallons of petroleum seep into North American waters every year, most of it from runoff, seaplanes, and small boats. Climate change is causing new disease outbreaks in ocean environments, affecting everything from coral reefs to oysters. Diseases threaten many corals in the Pacific. Since coral reefs provide rich habitat for fish, the loss of coral contributes to fish declines. Climate change also hurts large mammals that depend on fish. In the Arctic, melting ice may be preventing polar bears from reaching their fishing areas, and this affects their breeding patterns and the survival of their young cubs. Using examples and details from the lecture, Describe the causes and effects of problems that threaten the world's oceans.